It's time to reap the harvest of men Fish them out of the sea of destruction Show Hello and welcome away. to the fourth edition of the podcast for withoutspotorblemish.blogspot.com And uh, we're coming to you today with a topic which I'm entitling Christians Get Ready to Lose It All That wasn't my original topic title, if you will I initially was going to call it Confusing Following Christ with Self-Help. And that's kind of where my mind began, was on the idea that so many people follow Christ in order to benefit their situations, whether it be financial, through thinking that if they begin to employ the teachings of Christ, they'll get richer quicker, or they'll be better and better said financially. Not to confuse that with the idea that God is our provider and He provides for us, but it's people whose idea is not about being provided for, it's about succeeding. And obviously there's a huge portion of the church that preaches a prosperity gospel, which is intrinsically a self-help uh, type gospel. You know, you got your Joel Olsteins, your, your Creflo Dollars, your T.D. Jakes, you know, the, that bent or people that are trying to help you be the best you can be at whatever it is that you're, you're trying to do. I'm not saying there's necessarily anything wrong with that, or maybe I am actually, but even if there wasn't anything wrong with it, we are living in a day and an hour where it's not really going to matter. Hence the new title, you're about to lose it all. So, um, Without further further ado, let's pray and make sure we get God's involvement in this podcast so that you guys and as well as myself can come away edified and and uh, not not afraid but feeling even better about our situations because we can trust so much in our Father in heaven to provide for us no matter what uh, circumstances we're in. If you want to see evidence of that, just look at Israel in the desert uh, where there was no water present or seemingly available. And there was no food available, and he provided for them there so he can provide for us now. So let's go ahead and begin our prayer. Father God, we just praise you and thank you for your presence here. Um, We just ask you to come and stem, stem the tide of any sort of confusion in us. And um, deliver us from a misunderstanding of what it means to serve you. Deliver us of any misunderstanding of how money is... Uh, a part of our lives and what it means to us. Um, you said in your word, you cannot serve God and money. You said that. You, you or you're going to love the one and hate the other, or serve the uh, the one and and, and uh, hate the other. So, you've made it clear in your word that we can't serve God and money. And so, I'm just asking you to help us understand what that really means, because we live in a world where goods and services are exchanged uh, with money. So show us what that means. Help us understand how to live in this world. Help us to understand the hour that we're living in, the prophetic hour we're in, and help us to be um, prepared. And I'm not talking about prepared physically. I mean spiritually prepared for what's happening and for what's about to happen. Um, Help us to uh, know from your word that you warned us that these things should come to pass and told us not to worry or fret over it. Help us not to become worried over what we're seeing in the earth and to um, humble ourselves before you and put our full and complete trust in you, Father. That's really what we need to do. And we're just asking for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So back to our topic. You know, I, I told you that I was, you know, going to talk on confusing following Christ with self-help. And it's easy to do that when you first get saved because you're in the world and your mindset in the world was, for many of us, was to succeed. And how is success measured? Well, success can often be measured by money in the bank account, size of our house, the cars we drive. Some of us weren't even that concerned with you know, the size of the house or, or the level of car, the, the Mercedes, the Beamer. We weren't necessarily concerned about all that. We just wanted to have nice things and and, and be okay in, in the world. And a lot of new Christians will, will, will 
come into the kingdom and they almost think, well, now I'm going to be blessed at everything I put my hand to do financially. And I'm going to, um, you know, I've got God on my side now. I'm definitely going to do well. And that is the main misnomer, misunderstanding about what it means to serve God and, and to live in this world. I mean, Jesus said some pretty, um, what you might consider radical things about money. He said, as I alluded to earlier, that you uh, can't serve God and money. You've got to choose one. Um, he said that uh, he told this rich young ruler that came to him to sell all that he had, give to the poor, and to come follow me. He said that to the rich young ruler. I mean, he uh, he said that uh, he who saves his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake, being Jesus' sake, shall find it. I mean, he said a lot of thing, a lot of things about losing the old to get the new. He said um, something with regard to money. He said, lay not your treasures up um, on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. Um, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So he warned against accumulation of wealth in this earth. And be, because these things are temporal, that means temporary, um, and and they're subject to um, entropy. To they're subject to death, as the whole universe is. Things get old in this in this earth, and all these um, things can be um, subject to rust. And they just once the um, the initial newness wears off, everything gets old. Your clothes gets old. Your shoes, your houses. Everything gets old, and um, and it can also be stolen from you. And he's but but really he's saying something so much deeper that this world is not a place for you to invest in because it's gonna die. When Jesus returns, he's gonna rule for a thousand year reign, and he's gonna, the earth is gonna be as good as it can possibly be when he's here ruling and reigning in terms of Satan's going to be in the bottomless pit. He's not going to be out and about tempting everybody during that thousand year reign. Things are going to be great, but that's not even going to be good enough for God because that was my dog. Sorry. After that thousand year reign, God is going to destroy the earth and the heavens. And even the stuff that those that are, are blessed enough to be here during Jesus's thousand year reign even the stuff you accumulated in the, in the earth itself, all those things are going to go the way of destruction because God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And the reason why is because even with Jesus coming back to rule and reign for the millennial reign, this earth has still been corrupted by sin and death. That was not God's original intent. Death did not come into the world until the Garden of Eden incident where Eve partook of the fruit and gave it to Adam. Everything was perfect. And the new heaven and the new earth, that perfection is going to be restored. There's going to be no more sorrow, crying, tears, pain, anything like that. Everything is going to be absolute perfection. And this is the problem. And this is what Satan gets you focused on. He wants you to focus on perfection on this earth He wants you to think that you can have heaven on earth now in this corrupt world. And believe me when I tell you how corrupted it is. Compared to what things were like here before the flood and in the Garden of Eden, if you will, this earth is horrible compared to what it was due to sin and death. And the point I really want, I'm making about this is that because of sin and death, it's this is all smoke and mirrors. Even the person that lives in the giant mansion and, and has the beautiful cars, all of those things wax old. All of those things don't maintain. And all of those things are could be subject to destruction through wars or theft or whatever. So the point that I think Jesus is trying to make 
and I hope I'm getting it across, is that we our our hope is in this future that this this new heaven and this new earth the the writer of hebrews i think it was writes of that we we wait for a new city for a new jerusalem that we're strangers and uh, almost vagabonds in the earth you know jesus said that the son of man has nowhere to lay his head you know this isn't his home jesus said that we're we're in this world but we're not of this world even as he wasn't of the world we're not of this world and so, as you find in yourself, that is in your flesh, your desire to grip onto things and to um, make yourself um, spread abroad like a big uh, green bay tree, you know, and just get bigger and bigger in terms of your kingdom on earth, the, that is all in vain. That is for naught. That is not going to help you. You can't take any of that with you. It's like Jesus said of... Um, the man that had so much and filled up his barns. And when the day he came to die, um, God chastised him and said, Thou fool, um, what, did, what did you think you were going to do with all this stuff? So, you know, going back to the rich young ruler, sell that you have, give the poor, come follow me. So what that means for us today is that we've got to get out of this mindset as Christians that, you know, the only reason to become one is to become blessed uh, financially, or that God's gonna gonna suddenly enlarge your kingdom. And too many of us are not only focused on that; we are obsessed with it. And that's the only reason that we even pay God lip service is because we just want Him to bless us and bless our kingdoms, and we're just gripping onto these things that we have so tight. And um, I'm telling you, the reason why I said that the title of this blog was you're going to lose it all. You know, as Jesus said, you got to lose your life to save it. We are living in an hour, in my estimation, that is going to lead to a time much like what the Jews experienced just prior uh, to World War II and, and what um, Nazi Germany did to them, where suddenly they started losing everything and having everything taken from them. They were beginning to put the Star of David on them. They were tracking their movements. They began to quarantine them in ghettos. They began to take all of their belongings, their, their uh, wealth, their gold, their silver, their artwork. I mean, millions and millions and millions of dollars in um, possessions that the Jews had. And all of that was taken from them. And lest you think that we're too far away from that, all it takes for that same thing to happen globally, worldwide, is for them to say you cannot buy or sell without a chip or without the mark. And as soon as they do that, you can't pay your taxes anymore. If you can't pay your taxes, you can't own that house. They'll come confiscate it from you. You don't own it anyway. You may even have your mortgage completely paid off. But if you don't pay those taxes, they're going to take your property. Nobody owns anything really anymore. And that, that's a truth. And uh, the bankers, they figured out a way to own the world lock, stock, and barrel. Even the things we think we own, we don't. It's so funny to see someone on like HGV, HGTV. They're like a first-time homeowner. They just bought a house and they mortgaged it to the hilt. And they all say, they all look so excited that they own something. They don't own that. The bank owns it. And they're going to be paying that bank some serious rent for a good large portion of the front end of that loan because all those loans are interest uh, interest top heavy. That first year, they'll probably pay 90% of what they pay into that mortgage is going to be interest. And it will just slowly, that, that number will slowly decline over the life of the loan. But the bankers have set it all up perfectly for themselves <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there if they make it that where you can't buy or sell it's not even going to matter what you own because you're not going to be able to pay taxes on how are you going to drive a car that you can't pay taxes on those of you that are so wed to your cars you know and a lot of uh christian i'll call them preppers and i have no problem with doing some preparation but you buy your property and you pay your taxes on your property um, out in the country somewhere, 
And um, it's obvious everybody knows who owns every single piece of land worldwide, but particularly in the States. There's not a remote piece of property that they don't know that you're there. So they're going to know that you own it. They're going to know exactly where you are. And they'll come confiscate it. And it's during that time the Bible says that the Antichrist is going to make war on the saints. And the saints are going to be the people who are not going to take the mark. And he's going to, he's going to make war on us. And, he's, it, and it actually says and he's going to overcome them. So many of us will even die during that time. Are you, are you ready for that? Are you even ready to lose your stuff, much less die? Are you going to be able to not take the mark for your stuff? I mean, I'm being really serious. We think this is so far away. The mark of the beast could be turned tomorrow. This chip, you know full well it's in your dog already. Don't act like they can't do it to, to us. Come on. Come on. The city I live in, you can't have your... It's against the law that your dog doesn't have a chip. Do you know how many military people have already accepted a chip? Do you know how many people um, the scientific community have accepted a chip? Do you know how many uh, famous people have put chips in their children? I mean, it's at the door. The technology's increased at a mind-boggling rate. Now... This isn't going to happen until the Antichrist comes to power. I believe that'll be at the midpoint of the tribulation period, three and a half years in. But you might as well go ahead and get out ahead of all this and start to trim the fat in your life financially and stop for the love of God. Please stop making money so important to you. It truly is time for you to... Put God before money in your life. I mean, so many of us are, are, are so fretful over money. I know people who have so much money that are so afraid right now. They're so afraid. I know people that um, making six figures, they lose their job and they're out of work for a month. They haven't found the next job yet or the next gig yet. And uh, they've got so much in reserves and so many things they could sell. And they are beside themselves thinking about losing their kingdom. That is earthly wealth. That's an idol. If you're one of those people that focuses on your kingdom and the things you've got, and it, to think that you wouldn't have those things, to think that you'd become like the Jews were forced to be, in World War II and put in a train and cart it off like they were to Dach Dachau or one of those um, concentration camps. Think about getting through that event and then at the end, just consider what do you think they had? They had nothing. Imagine if that happened to you because that's what's going to happen. You mark my words, that's what's going to happen because the Bible says that's what's going to happen. The Antichrist is going to make war against the saints. And many of us uh, will be beheaded for Christ. See the scripture there? They are beheaded for their testimony. But then there will be many of us that will flee into the wilderness and will be protected by the wilderness. That's the part where the Bible speaks of the dragon casting a flood into the earth and, the, and, the, and God causing the earth to swallow up the flood and help the woman. The woman there represents the church, God's people. So many of us will be hiding. And the wilderness could be proverbial. I mean, it could literally mean wilderness. It could be, could be anywhere. You may have some people doing what Anne Frank did in um, World War II. I'm telling you, that's what they planned for us. The, the, the plan is in place. You think the persecution of Christians is tough now in the U.S.? You know, you might, you might need to go talk to some of your Chinese friends to see just how tough they've had it. And the ones that have to be um, in underground churches because there's a state church that tells them what to believe, which isn't even the gospel. That, you, 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 this country is not free anymore. The U.S. isn't free. Come on. You know the U.S. isn't free. You knew that. You knew that. You think it is, but it's really not because they are going to crack down on us. Just like um, 
Just like uh, Russia did, just like the Soviet Union did with Stalin and Lenin and all of those that cracked down on uh, religious beliefs. Because there's going to be a one world religion. And believe it or not, it's going to be Catholicism. That's going to be the religion that's going to morph with the others to make one. And the Pope's going to be the false prophet that pops up the, the beast, which will be the political leader. A lot of people think the Pope's going to be the beast. No, or the Antichrist. No, he is Antichrist. He is a false Christ. His representation in the Bible is of a um, two-horned um, sh a lamb. The horns make him look like a goat, but he's dressed in sheep's clothing. That is the false prophet. And the false prophet is going to cause all small and great, rich and poor, to worship the beast. And then also to get us to try to take that to try to get us to take that mark, but true Christians won't do that. So I just don't want there to be any confusion about your things. Your things aren't going to matter to you not one single bit. And so what does that mean for us now? What that means is we have got to get right with God. We have got to serve Him. We've got to love Him every day. We've got to put Him before money. We've got to be able to hear his voice and be led of him and um, not be so caught up in winning the quote, the game, the financial game. And we've got to come out of the world. Sports has got to become less important to some of you dudes that worship it, that can't stop watching ESPN all sing all day, every day. Um, things the, the things that are not of God, that are not about God, you know, um, things that don't include prayer and, and reading your Bible to get to know God better. I, I strongly encourage you to curtail those activities a little bit, more than a little bit. If you're watching TV for an hour, I challenge you to read your Bible and pray for an hour. For every hour of TV you watch, I challenge you to read, read and pray your Bible for an hour. Guarantee that TV time will drop in just that one hour a day with the Lord will change your entire life. And I don't mean to make you rich physically. I mean to make you rich spiritually, to make you rich in heavenly places, to have your treasures in heaven. And it also will help you start to bring in people into the kingdom. Because that's what's at issue here. You're so caught up in making money, expanding your kingdom. Um, some of you are so obsessed with, I got to be a good provider to my kids and to my wife. So you've got to live in a country club area in a gated golf community, and that's good provision. And a lot of you women have put that on your husband. You've put that burden on him because you love to have it so posh. And I'm not trying to put all the blame on you women either because a lot of you men like it. But a lot of you women have made it exorbitantly hard for your man to do anything but run on, run on the hamster wheel and grind the grindstone all day long. 80 hours a week to, pro, quote, provide for you. You, you wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be good enough for you to have a little um, three-bedroom um, three bedroom, uh, ranch somewhere, small house to live in where your husband could actually be at home and looking after your family and having a relationship with God. No, you got to make him into some kind of slave and drive him. And the Bible says you got to provide for your family. But what is provision? What is provision? When we look up to heaven, we say in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. That's what we're asking for. We're looking for a little shelter and some clothing. Why does it have to be um, everybody driving a sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 car? Why does it have to be that way? Why do we have to have um, giant uh, blacked out windowed Suburbans? And why does everything have to be so perfect in this world? Why do we have to have heaven on earth? And why is a man a failure if his wife doesn't have that? I'm telling you, that is the world in the church. And we need to get delivered from that. We need to get delivered from this obsession with things. And... I'm asking you as the listener, male or female, married or not, I'm asking you to go look, go inventory your, your physical life 
and see what stuff controls you. See what things keep you from prayer with God, from even talking to Him, from even knowing Him. And I'm not. I'm, not, I'm talking. I'm talking about your 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 things that represent your wealth. I'm not even talking about your sin life. Like if you're doing things that are sin, uh, like using porn or whatever. I'm not even talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about your material wealth and your drive to get more of it. Because guess what? Get ready to lose it all. I'm telling you. you. Most of you, all the things you've got, you never needed to accumulate that anyway. You should have been focused on God. And He would have provided, a, provided for you while also giving you time to love on Him and to love on each other and to have a ministry and to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I mean, I'm telling you, you're going to lose it. And the only way that you're not going to lose it initially is if you take the mark of the beast. Then you'll be able to keep your stuff. But guess what? That time at the middle of the tribulation until Jesus returns is only three and a half years. You're going to get to keep your stuff for three and a half more years. Meanwhile, you'll have been involved in the murder, wholesale murder of the only decent human beings on earth and the, the ones that God made born again. And you have been involved in their murders. Once you take the mark, there's no turning back. And then you're going to go to the lake of fire that burns with brimstone forever and ever and ever. Once you take that mark for your things, which you're only going to have for three and a half more years anyway, you're going to go to hell for three and a half years of having that stuff. So I encourage you, that was my dog, I encourage you right now to go ahead and start to pare down your stuff. Start to pare down the things that you have to have. Start to put your treasures in heaven. Start to build that relationship with your Father in heaven. Further, further build it. Apologize to Him for putting things before Him. It didn't work. You don't know Him if things came before Him in your life. You didn't get to know him. It's time to get to know him and to trust him and to hear his voice because you're going to need to hear it. You're going to need to hear it. If you're one of those people that's going to get through the tribulation period, that three and a half years, you know, it says, and Jesus said that if it weren't for the, the elect, all flesh would perish. And God's going to shorten the tribulation period for the elect. That is for us so that we can make it. I guess you're picking up. There's no pre-tribulation rapture, guys. There's no pre-trib rapture. Hardly a soul in the church would go anywhere. A handful of people would go anywhere. Because we're not ready. This church is not ready. Because of things just like this. And from the things I talked about in the other three videos. Not ready. We have to clean up. You have to get ready. This is part of it. Quit being a materialistic person. Quit living for this world. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Because that's, that's what this is all about right here. This time right now. Look how in society already it seems like the, the wealth gap between the super rich and the poor is just obviously increasing and getting bigger and bigger. And the rich are getting so rich. But those people are selling their souls. They've sold them already. And they can get them back up until the point that they take the mark. They can still repent. Maybe I'm talking to a super rich person right now. You can repent. It's not too late. Don't let that devil tell you that, he'll, that, that, that you can't repent if you've sold your soul. Even if you signed in blood, you can still repent. And you know what? If, if, if God chooses that once you repent, that it seems like the devil can take his vengeance out on you and you die, does it matter if you die and go to paradise where you, where you have everything you wanted every, anyway? But I'm going to tell you right now, most of you, that's just a, that's an idle threat to take your life. If you, if you truly go to God's camp, he'll, he can protect you. Not can't, just can. Satan can't do anything to God. He has no power over God. And 
God can decide if you're going to continue to live in this world or not. But no one, unless you've um, blasphemed the Holy Ghost, but I don't, I'm not even exactly sure what that is, but no one is beyond repentance and turning back to God, at least for now. But I'm going to tell you something, and this is for a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians are going to take the mark of the beast. A lot of people that call themselves of Christ, you're going to take that mark. A lot of you think that because we're not raptured out of here, because you think you're supposed to be raptured first, which is a lie, you're going to think when the mark comes along, this can't be it because we'd be gone. That's why the world, including the Tim LaHaye books, all the Left Behind series, that's why these movies have been made and pushed. I mean, do you think that um, someone like Nicolas Cage, who has made so many demonic films, do you think he's going to make a Christian movie? Come on, come on. I know he needs the money to pay back taxes or whatever, but seriously, if that was a true Christian movie, why would the world make that movie? They hate God. They hate the truth. They made it because it's a lie, and it's going to bamboozle many of you, this pre-tribulation rapture garbage. You're going to be here for every second of it, and you need to know that, and you need to be ready for when they try to make you take the mark. And you need to be ready that you're not going to be able to own anything anymore. And you're going to be on the run. And you're not even going to have food. You're not going to know where your next meal is going to come from. Except to know that it's going to come from God. You're not going to like, oh, let me go in my refrigerator and get something. No, 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 no. No, no, no. If you're still alive during the tribulation and you're on the run, you're going to be trusting God to drop manna from heaven. Or to send some quails your way. All things he did when um, Israel was um, in the desert, once they left Egypt on the way to the promised land. It's gonna, that's not going to be easy. But God's going to do miracle after miracle, and he'll sustain you for the three and a half years until Jesus returns. Then you'll see him come on the clouds with great glory. That's when you'll see him return. He's coming back once, not twice. Not once at the beginning of the tribulation, once at the end. He's coming back one time. And that's why you need to be prepared to lose it all because you're gonna you're gonna it's just that simple how quickly that happens remains to be seen but as i always allude to in these um podcasts you'll know that tribulations begun when the ezekiel 38 war um begins which is a war that includes gog and magog which many believe to be russia and iran and they come against israel and it says it takes seven months to bury all the dead bodies and seven years to clean up all the mess. Many people believe that'll begin the tribulation, and I'm one of those people. So that's all I'm, I have to say. So once that war happens, then you know we got about seven, approximately seven years left, three and a half years in. You can't buy or sell without the mark. So that war could happen any day now. I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow or next year or, or when it's going to happen. But once that happens, you might as well be ready. But the situation's already in place with between Iran and, and Israel. Iran has been wanting to, um, what are they? how do they say it? They're going to push Israel into the sea. They've been saying that for years and years. Who provides arms to Iran? Russia. Who's messing around in the Ukraine and all of a sudden got... Um, a lot closer in terms of having troops to Israel in the Crimea region, which they now occupy in the Ukraine. Who's had um, ships um, just outside of Syria in the Mediterranean? Russia. So who's getting sick of playing second fiddle to the United States? Russia. Who's getting sick of having everyone poke their finger in their eye? Iran. It's only so much those two together are going to take. I'm not sure how China would be involved in it. I don't see them mentioned in that, but they all have seemed to come together. Once that war happens, it's on like Donkey Kong. And the first three and a half years is about revival. It's about getting people saved and delivered and set free. You might as well start focusing on that now. It's time for people to come to the light to come to the truth, to quit worrying about things and start working about things that are eternal, 
people, including many Christians, are way too caught up in the temporary, in the here and now, and not in the eternal. The only thing you're going to take into eternity with you is your soul and your spirit. Your flesh ain't going nowhere as it is. It's not. It's just not. And nothing of this world's going into your eternity. It's just not going to make it. So set it in your hearts to focus on the eternal things, the love of God, the hope of God, the peace of God, the joy of God. Share those things, the gospel, the truth. These are all things that are like the air. You can't see it, but they're all there. You can't see love. You can't see truth. You can't see peace. But these are all things that are spiritual in nature. They exist. And so focus on bringing those things to other people and getting their eyes on eternity and off of this corrupted world so that you can have eternal life. Father, we praise you and thank you for this time and this word. May we all take from it and see that your word is truth and that this world, it's got a lot of pretty sparkly things, Father God, but we don't need to hold on to them, those things to our, to our peril, Father God. We need to stay focused on the, the eternal things. Help us to do that, Lord. Help each and every listener to do that. I come against every demonic spirit and, and every listener and viewer of this video. I come against every spirit in them that would be demonic, that would cause them to drive them to greed. A spirit of greed I bind up from all over, over all of God's people. Greed and lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, lust for things of this earth having to have bigger and better of everything, quote, the best of everything. I just come against that spirit in every one of the listeners right now in Jesus' name. And I just lose being content with the things that you have and being filled with the love of God and the, and the peace of God, the joy of God, and the things that last eternally, not with temporary things. I lose all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. So just want to thank you for listening. And um, again, if you ever need prayer or have any questions, feel free, free to uh, message me. And um, we can set up a time to pray and uh, help you get delivered in any way possible. Thanks again for listening. Bye. Lift them up into God's holy ship. It's time to reap the harvest of men. Fish them out of the sea of destruction show them the way out of satan's grip lift them up into god's holy ship